So for example, first class round trip is going to run you $21,000, or you can use 110,000 American Express MR points instead, meaning that you get 19 cents per point. Today, we're going to look at some of the best ways to use American Express points. Since the last time we filmed, there has been a pretty big devaluation of one of the options and also a new option coming out for business owners. This is part one of a two-parter, more so targeted towards new people. I'll do a part two if there's interest where I go through each of the transfer partners and kind of run through a few use cases. Let me know if you want to see that though, because I don't want to make it if you don't want it. With that said, for this video, big favor, give this a thumbs up. And if you are someone new here, consider subscribing. The first option is going to be shopping with your points. And this is surprisingly bad in a lot of ways. American Express pretty much has their own shopping portal where you can buy things. The first reason why it sucks is because it has older things on there. And number two, you're not getting good value. For example, 10,000 points is going to only be worth $50. This means that you're only getting 0.5 cents for each of your points. I had to go find a penny, but each point is only worth half a penny. So for example, if you have 100,000 points, that's $500 in value. Sometimes I wonder why this even exists as an option. If I had to guess, the target market is probably people buying gifts for their relatives who want a one-click option. Option number two is redeeming your points to offset your excise tax. When you transfer your points out to partners in order to redeem for first class, American Express charges 0.06 cents per point or 0.0006 if you transfer 100,000 points, that's a $60 fee. This option allows you to redeem your points to offset this at 0.5 cents per point. Pretty bad value overall. Option number three is going to be redeeming your points as a statement credit. This means using your card, swiping it as normal, and then using your points to offset that. I'd argue that this is pretty much a cash equivalent. Absolute worst case, buy something for a friend and have them pay you back cash. Might be a bit sketchy, but still works for that cash out. Here, you're going to get 0.6 cents per point, so 100,000 points is $600 in value. If you're someone of a sizable points balance, I'd look into some of the other methods that we talk about later on, because even if you're cashing it out, those just feel a lot better. I'd say that this is more of a last resort, kind of like a fire alarm. Diving into a super fast rabbit hole, this is one of the reasons why I'm not a fan of the gold card if you are someone running a cashback setup. You pretty much need to pair it with either a brokerage card like the Schwab or the Morgan Stanley or a business platinum in order to make it work. So for example, gold card Forex back for dining at 0.6 cents per point, that's only 2.4% back. With the Saver 1 card, there's no annual fee and you get 3% back for dining. Same thing with something like the Chase Freedom Flex, 3% back when dining, no annual fee. I'm a huge fan of the gold card and I think it's one of the best workhorses available, but make sure that you're getting something that works for you and what you're trying to accomplish. For some people, the gold card might be more like the Pyrite card. On a side note, if you are someone that wants to learn about cards, whether it's the gold or some other option out there and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise, it's a huge way to support the channel, so thank you guys in advance. Option number four is donating your points to charity. Here, you're generally going to get 0.7 cents per point, and it feels good because you're donating, but at the same time, there are better options where you can cash out, and it might make sense to donate the money you cash out. Also, some of the options are going to be lower value, so for example, Save the Children, 1,000 points is only $5, so 0.5 cents per point. If you're donating a small amount, then I think that's fine, but if you're doing a pretty sizable amount, I think option 12 and 13 are better fits. Option number five is booking travel on amextravel.com. Mind you, this does not include flights as well as FHR properties because that's later down on the list. If you're booking hotels, car rentals, cruises, or other vacation packages, you're going to get 0.7 cents per point. So 100,000 points is $700 in value. I'd say that this doesn't feel great for a lot of reasons. Main one being that you can get more value with your competitors, often with more flexibility. So for example, for Capital One, you can get one cent per point when you book using their portal, but you can also redeem your points and kind of erase prior charges charges at one cent per point as well. Option number six is using your points to check out with select merchants. Taking a look at their list, you have companies like Amazon, Best Buy, Box, Dell, and Grubhub. In this case, you're getting $70 for 10,000 points, so 0.7 cents per point. The rates can obviously change in the future, so just a heads up. There's a few I want to highlight, and those are going to be PayPal as well as Ticketmaster. Benefit of PayPal is that you can pretty much use that for most online stores, meaning that you're locking in 0.7 cents per point for most of your shopping. Be careful of Ticketmaster though, because that one's at 0.5 cents per point. Main takeaway for this part is that you're getting about 0.7 cents per point on average, and typically, if you're not, then probably don't use that partner or just pay with PayPal. Also, be careful of this one because some stores will try to default to using your points for whatever reason. I remember Amazon did that for a bit, and it was pretty annoying. No, I don't want to use my points for this purchase. If you're someone into shopping, then number eight might be a pretty good pick. But before we do that, we have number seven, which is redeeming your points into an American Express business checking account. So if you have one of these American Express business checking accounts, you get 0.8 cents per point 
when you cash it out. This means that 100,000 points is $800, which isn't too bad at all. Call me crazy, but I think it's a much needed option for the business crowd with work accounts who felt a bit sus transferring it to Schwab or Morgan Stanley. Reminder that if you earn points from either spending on the card or from an intro bonus, that's going to be counted as a rebate and not part of something taxable. This means that when you transfer the points out, even towards cash, it's not a taxable event. To be fair though, if you do have a lot of points, I think option 11 is a bit better. Option number eight is going to be gift cards. This is one of the options that have a lot of variants, so I'd be careful with this. Generally though, and the target that you're going for is going to be one cent per point, so 100,000 points is $1,000 in value. Amex pretty much has a gift card store and you can pick what you want. For example, for something like Home Depot, it's one cent per point, $1,000 in value for 100,000 points. Same thing for Adidas, $100 gift card for 10,000 points. In contrast though, for Airbnb, it's going to be less value closer to 0.7 cents per point, or technically 0.69 cents per point. There's actually a lot of options that are in the one cent per point range, but some of them have variants or they require you to jump through hoops. Option number nine is going to be upgrading your seat. This feels like a weird one to put in pretty much the middle of the list because you have YouTubers like Ask Sebi telling you how first in business class is amazing and you're getting great value. So why wouldn't this be on the top? So what I'm typically talking about is actually the last option. This one is a little bit different. The easiest way to think of this is that American Express is taking your points and then bidding them and hoping the airline accepts it. American Express has a bunch of partners for this, but I think it's not actually their partners. The reason I say this is because I think it's the same backend as the ones the airlines run themselves. So for example, Etihad sends me emails telling me that I can bid to upgrade. And in fact, a lot of airlines have similar programs like this. Air Canada is another one that has something pretty similar. My understanding is that plusgrade.com is the company behind this, pretty much the backend service for everything. Okay, but why does that matter? We're talking about American Express. The reason it matters is because we need to understand what's going on. If you look at the American Express reward calculator, one of the options is to upgrade of points. And here there's showing that 10,000 points equates to $100. In effect, one cent per point. And in fact, reading more about this online, it seems like American Express is using points and bidding them at one cent per point for those upgrades. So 100,000 points is $1,000 in value. If you have an upcoming flight, then I think it's worth checking. But at the same time, you could use cash or use a different card to do that. You don't have to use American Express points, especially if option number 13, for example, you're better off cashing out your points and then using the cash that you have to bid for that. Hopefully that makes sense. It's not a bad option per se, but you don't need to go through their program. You can just use anything else. Option number 10 is going to be booking flights through the American Express portal and hotels through Amex FHR. I feel like the flight part is pretty straightforward. Hotels is a bit more complicated because FHR doesn't have as many options. For the most part, they lean more towards expensive hotels and there's a few exceptions for places like Chicago as well as Vegas, but a lot of the bigger cities, it gets pretty expensive. With this option, you're locking in one cent per point. So 100,000 points is a thousand dollars towards your flights or towards the Amex FHR hotels. Of the options that we've talked about, I feel like this is kind of the range that I would feel is acceptable. Obviously up to you, but the other options just don't feel that great. If you're in this camp, I'd argue that other issuers still might be a better fit depending on your circumstances. So for example, of Chase, if you had a Sapphire Reserve and you book travel through their portal, then you're getting 1.5 cents per point. So pretty much 50% more value compared to here and also with a ton more flexibility. Using dining as an example, the gold card earns 4x back times 1 cent per point. That's 4% towards travel and specifically these flights and FHR stays. CSR earns 3x back and at 1.5 cents per point, that's 4.5% towards any travel through their portal. Obviously not apples to apples because the gold card pretty much has a highly subsidized annual fee given the credits that you get and the Chase Sapphire Reserve has things like Priority Pass as well as a bunch of protections. Main idea is that other issuers make it a lot easier to get elevated value for your points. Okay, so option number 11 is cashing out the points into a business checking account if you have a business platinum card. Again, no taxes on this, pretty much everything that we talked about for number seven. So it's a rebate and it's not a taxable event. If you have both an Amex business checking account and an Amex business platinum card, you're getting one cent per point instead of just 0.8 cents per point. Depending on the number of points you have, there might even be an argument to get the platinum business card, even if you are someone that's not using any of the benefits and you valued the card otherwise at zero. So pretty much taking on an annual fee solely to get elevated value. In case anyone cares, you can actually solve for this pretty easily with a break-even analysis. So 695 annual fee and the difference is 0.002. Solving for this, we have about 347,000 points as the break-even point. That means that if you're redeeming at least that level of points, then it makes sense to pick up the card even if you don't use it. And yes, that sounds like a weird thing to do, 
but yeah, it mathematically works out. I'll put up a proof on the screen just in case, but yeah, here you get $5 more in value and the more points you redeem, the better it is. It might sound like a weird edge case, but the reason I wanna say this is because there are a lot of business owners who are pretty frugal, but who also have to spend a lot for things like ads. Option number 12 is going to be cashing out your points into your Morgan Stanley brokerage account. Pretty much the same idea, but on the personal side. So the constraint here is that you need to have a Morgan Stanley Platinum card to do this. And in order to get a Morgan Stanley Platinum card, you need to have a Morgan Stanley Cash Plus or investment account. In case you're wondering, you do need to keep your Morgan Stanley account open. If you close it, then they'll close your Morgan Stanley Platinum card. Hopefully that makes sense because I feel like I'm saying a lot of words. There's a ton of nuance and arguments about opportunity cost and whether this is worth it at all, but I'll save that for a future video. For the purpose of this one though, you're getting one cent per point when you cash it out. Effectively cash since you can move it to another account afterwards. Option number 13 is cashing out to your Schwab account. To do this, you need to have a Schwab Platinum card and to get that card, you need to have a Schwab account. The benefit of the Schwab account is that it's a lot more straightforward there's not really any fees or things to juggle. I'd say that this is one of the best ways to cash out your points and you're getting 1.1 cents per point. It also depends on how you want to play this. For people who have more normal spend, I'd recommend this as kind of an off-ramp, kind of exit liquidity. So pretty much collect all the points you can, and then when you want to get out of the system, this is your tool. Keeping this as a long-term setup could work, but it's more so for people who have pretty sizable Schwab holdings. Otherwise, I feel like it kind of falls into this Goldilocks dilemma where it doesn't make sense for most people. In effect, the card only really makes sense if you value the perks from the Platinum card and you do enough traveling. At the same time, number two, you travel, but you don't value transfer partners. So you don't care about business and first and aspirational stuff. This probably means that you're a domestic traveler optimizing for number of trips and frequency rather than the experience itself. Alternatively, you're someone who spends so much and earns so many points that you cannot reasonably use them all. So even if you are booking first in business class, you still have a lot left over every year. Option number 14 is going to be paying with points as a rebate for the business gold card. With the business gold, you get a 25% rebate. So every time you use your points at that one cent per point rate, you get 25% back. So for example, if you spend 100,000 points to cover that $1,000 flight, you get 25% back, meaning that you only spent 75,000 points for the $1,000 flight. So 1.33 cents per point. The business gold, it only works for two types of flights. So ones that are part of your airline that you selected for your incidental credit, regardless of economy, business first, anything, that's fine. Number two is any first and business class flight from any airline. So for example, if I have Delta selected as mine, I can book anything and that's fine, or I can book United Business. The max rebate for this card is 250,000 points, meaning that you don't really wanna redeem more than a million points in this way. Option number 15 is pretty much the same thing, paying off your points as a rebate on the business platinum. So for the business platinum, you get a 35% rebate instead of just 25%. If you spend 100,000 points on a trip, you get 35,000 points back. So doing the math, that means you spent 65,000 points for your $1,000 trip or 1.54 cents per point. In terms of eligible flights, it's still the same thing. So the airline that you select, anything, any class of service, and any airline, business and first. The max rebate here is 1 million points per year, meaning that you don't really want to redeem more than 2.85 million points. And I guess that's a first world problem. For normal people, I'd say that this is one of the more underrated options out there, especially if you get value from the card. To be fair, you do have to be loyal to one airline or book more premium fares, but the fact that it's 1.54 cents per point, it's a pretty material jump from everything that we talked about. Option number 16 is pay off points as a rebate on the Business Centurion. The Business Centurion gets you a 50% rebate, so if you spend 100,000 points, you get 50,000 points back. Doing the math, that's 50,000 points for your $1,000 flight or two cents per point. Unlike the prior two, this works for any airline and any class of service. There's also no cap for this, meaning that you can do it as much as you want. For a lot of business owners, this ends up being the holy grail because you're locking in that value. We talked about the e-com example earlier, but if you spend 100K a month on ads, that's 400K points and 4 million points a year. A two cents per point and 4 million points, that's $80,000 in flights. <sighs> Option number 17 is the last one and it's transferring your points to American Express's airline and hotel partners. This is probably the most controversial option out there for a lot of reasons, and you can easily get 10 cents per point, 20 cents per point, or maybe 0.5 cents per point. For the most part, I put this at about two to three cents per point because it feels more fair, but obviously depends on you. So what we're doing here is transferring your American Express MR points out to airline or hotel partner currencies. So for example, membership award points to Virgin Miles or membership award points to Hilton points. Last week, we ended up staying at the Waldorf Astoria in Los Angeles using our Hilton certificate from the Surpass and Aspire cards and it was pretty good value. But even if you were using points, it works out. 
If you can find standard room availability, like on the left, it's going to be 120,000 points. Retail price is 975, but after taxes and fees, it's closer to 1,180. This means that you're pretty much getting one cent per point for Hilton points, since there's no tax of points. It's well worth it for a certificate and even of points. If you transfer American Express points over, it's one MR to two Hilton. Since we're getting one cent per point with Hilton, that means you're getting about two cents per point for these Amex points. Hilton also usually has transfer promotions, typically 30% bonus, and sometimes 50%. At 50%, this means one MR point is three Hilton. In effect, this means that you're getting three cents per point for each of your American Express points because of this. The fact that the Hilton points that you get are now worth one cent per point. You see this with flights as well, and it gets a lot crazier. Here, we're going to transfer American Express MR points over to Virgin, so we have Virgin points now, and then using Virgin points to book with their partner, who's a and And they have a lot of different partners, but a and tends to be the best one, along with Delta. Taking a look at their award chart, it's going to be between 90,000 and 95,000 Virgin points to book business class, round trip, from the US to Japan. The range is a function of whether you're on the East Coast or the West Coast. It's going to be 110 to 120,000 Virgin points to book a and first class. And again, this is for round trip. If we take a look at the prices, business class runs you $10,000. From the West Coast, that's 90,000 Virgin points or 11.6 cents per point. First class runs you $21,000. And from the West Coast, it's normally 110,000 points or 19 cents per point. Business travelers make up only 12% of airline passengers, but account for 75% of the profits. And yes, people do pay for these rates because we've been on flights where there's been K-pop stars. We were sitting in the back, but there were fangirls who were trying to sit with them and ended up getting moved to a different section within business class. And if anything, economy is more the loss leader while they make money on these premium fares. The value gets even crazier though once you factor in transfer promos. Normally, you can transfer to Virgin at one-to-one. -one, so for example, right now, there's a 30% promo. So pretty much 85 thousand MR points in order to get that 21,000 in a round trip flight. Doing the numbers again, that's $21,000 in value for 85,000 MR or 24.7 cents per point. And obviously there are a ton of issues with this. So number one, would you pay for this? Number two, how much work do you need to do to find availability and actually do the booking? Number three, and kind of more of a funny one is, well, I could cash out the points and then invest it and then get dividends. And then with the dividends, I can book this first class flight. Last one's more of a joke because I don't really see that happening unless you, let's say, saved 20 years of dividends. For exactly these reasons, that's why I generally peg it at two to three cents per point because it just feels more fair. And maybe I'm being dumb and I should tell people that if you sign up for the Platinum card, you get $24,000 in value. Technically true, and I guess you can prove that, but it just feels a bit weird. For most people, I think there's two different ways to value this. Number one is going to be pegging it to what you would reasonably pay. So for example, if I had to book that, how much would I reasonably pay? I think at most, it'd be $5,000 per person for round trip, and I think that would only be for a special occasion. So for example, if it was an anniversary or something, that feels pretty reasonable, a bit expensive, but it's still there. So in that case, $5,000 in value, for those 85,000 points with the 30% promo, that's 5.8 cents per point. For you, that number might be higher or lower depending on your circumstances. Number two is what people generally consider a good deal. If you go over to Flyer Talk, they have a premium fares deal page and you can kind of peg what's good and bad. Be aware that a lot of these flights are not going to be starting in the US. They start from abroad, go to the US and then go back abroad. You cannot really flip that. You have to kind of do it like that and make it two trips, but that's still an option. So for a lot of those flights, for example, Qatar Airlines, Q Suites, Jakarta to New York, back to Jakarta, it's going to be $2,800. In that case for business class, people happily pay $2,800. And if you have 85,000 points and we're using the prior things that we talked about, that's still three cents per point. If you can find a good award chart and a good product, especially for these international flights and first in business, it tends to be at least two cents per point. I'd be extremely careful with economy though and stuff like that because the value might not be there. If you're still someone on the fence, I'd compare the cash out rate with the experience. So for example, with Schwab, 85,000 points at 1.1 cents per point, that's $935. Would you spend $935 and a bit of time in order to book that trip? To me and to a lot of people, the main draw of points is a taste of extravagance. If you're someone already saving money and investing anyways, you have to question whether the additional 935 is going to move the needle. At the end of the day, your mileage is going to vary, so do what makes sense for you. Again, if you want to learn about cards, we have links on AskSabby.com and down below in the description box. If you made it to this point in the video, then leave a credit card emoji in the comments down below and I'll try to heart it and also respond to it. My question for you is how are you using your points? Are you maybe padding up your retirement account or are you starting to travel? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.